Hi, today we're going to look at something slightly different. We will not look at price data, but we will look at on-chain data. Meaning we will look at charts that analyze the actual transactions that happen on the blockchain. So we can see what kind of people buy, what kind of people sell, are they in profits, are they in losses. And one company that specializes on aggregating and presenting that data is Glassnode. So Glassnode brings out a weekly newsletter. And in this video, we're going to discuss the recent newsletter. Link of that newsletter is also in the video description. So it's a lot of charts. It's a lot of text. And so if you prefer watching a video rather than reading and you want to know what's currently driving the price, this is the video for you. So that's the recent price action. These charts are one day old. So the recent short term rally isn't yet shown over here. We are pretty much steadily going down. So that's simply a price chart. And what's interesting is when we look at who is actually causing this recent decline. So this is a longer term chart, more than two years of data, including the Corona crash. And so in black, we see the price, the Bitcoin price and here colored in red and in purple is a supply that has been provided by age of the wallet. So how long was the holding duration of the Bitcoin that moved on the blockchain? And what we see here is everything above six months. So six months to 12 months, one year to two year, etc., all the way up to more than 10 years. So these are the medium to long-term holders. And we can see that those medium to long-term holders, they don't sell that much recently anymore, right? They sold into the rally during Q4 of last year, but since then they stopped selling. And even if we recover, there's not as many medium to long-term holders that are currently selling. So this gives us a first impression who's actually selling over here. It's likely not the long-term holders. It's likely the short-term speculators that simply see the sideways trading range and that sell after they've seen the recent all-time high. Now this chart shows a pretty similar picture but in a slightly different way. So this shows the medium to short term wallets. The darker colors over here are very short term. The lighter ones are slightly more long term. And so we can see the brighter this picture gets over time, the longer the coins are held. So we can see there was a lot of active trading over here at the beginning of the year, but that trading activity has come down. People now tend to hold their coins for longer. So there's more people holding Bitcoin for at least six months compared to just a few months ago. So it looks like there's a sentiment shift. People don't buy Bitcoin for trading. People buy Bitcoin for long-term investing. The fraction of long-term investors are increasing, but the people that are currently driving down the price are not the long-term holders. So the short-term traders, they are selling, they depress the price, but they do become less important over time. Money moves from short-term wallets to longer-term wallets. Now here we can see how this short-term trading for the shrinking pool of active traders actually worked out. Those people are currently in the losses. So in black, we see the plus minus zero line. So people are neither in losses nor in profits. And currently with this recent decline, the short-term traders, they are in losses. But the losses, they are still not as low as during the summer of this year, right? We are not yet at full capitulation. That's how Glassnode calls this. But even though the losses, they are not as high in US dollar terms, the number of wallets that are in losses is pretty much comparable. So what that indicates is that a lot of coins have changed hands over here close to the all time high. Otherwise it would require way more of a dip in price to achieve the same percentage of entities being in profit, right? The fact that we are very close to the levels during the summer means that short term traders, they bought over here and they just lost. And so if you break this down, right? 25% approximately are currently in losses. These are the prices where they bought at, or these are the prices where the coins changed wallets, right? Where they moved hands. This is all just on-chain data, right? These are all just approximations. This is simply looking at the blockchain. When did one Bitcoin move from one wallet to the next? The data has been cleaned up quite a bit, but still sometimes we cannot be 100% sure if it's not simply a person that moves their coins maybe from an exchange to their hardware wallet or something like this. So this data is useful, but it's definitely not perfect. But as a rough approximation, I think this is pretty good. So a lot of people in losses, but the losses, they are not very large, right? And given that these charts are one or two days old, the cutoff might actually be a bit higher. So maybe now it's only 20% or so of people that are in losses because these losses that are described over here, they are pretty marginal for quite a lot of people. Now here's a chart I find very, very useful, especially if you're considering to buy Bitcoin over the long term. If you're considering to buy, say, for the next two or three or four years, because this chart shows 
the additional supply, the circulating supply versus the balance of the holders of the wallets that typically buy Bitcoin but don't sell it. So here Glassnode simply looked at the wallets that mainly have inflow and it looked at those wallets, how the balance of those wallets develop over time and it compared it to the new supply entering the market. So this is again a pretty long term chart. This is three and a half years of data and we can see that the illiquid supply, it tends to grow quicker than the circulating supply. So if you're wondering here, the circulating supply, it changes the slope. This here was basically the halvening, right? The new supply gets cut in half every four years. Bitcoin's new supply gets cut in half. And so when you now look at this new supply relative to the balance of those people that never sell, then you get to this squiggly pinkish line. We can see in black, that's the zero line. On average, those long-term holders, they tend to buy. So the squiggly line most of the time is above this black line. There was only a temporary sell of those long-term holders around here during the summer crash of this year. But if you're simply looking at the surface area of this squiggly line above the black line, of the squiggly pink line, most of the time it's above the black line. And especially recently, this delta is pretty large as well. So the short-term traders, they are suppressing the price. The long-term holders, they are buying more than ever before and they are buying more than new supply gets issued. And so in other words, this means Bitcoin over the long term is likely to continue to go up, right? Over the short term, it might go down. The short term traders, they depress the price, but the long term holders, the accumulation of the long term holders, it outpaces the additional circulating supply. And so when demand grows quicker than supply does, that means in the end that the price rises over time, right? No financial advice, but that's basically economics 101. So does it make sense to buy Bitcoin right now and hold it maybe for two or three or four years? This chart definitely implies that yes, it does make sense. It's very unlikely that Bitcoin will be at the same price three or four years from now compared to today simply because the long-term holders, they keep accumulating and they accumulate faster than the supply is growing. And that's not just a short-term thing, that's a consistent theme over the last three years with just a very brief interruption. Now here's another chart that shows pretty much the same picture. The long-term holders, they continue buying and that's exactly what you do when you buy from an exchange and you put it into cold storage. You have outflows from the exchanges and that's what's shown over here. Bitcoin goes away from the exchanges, it flows out. And I think it's very likely that this kind of money, these Bitcoins, they simply get stored maybe on hardware wallets or maybe in custody solutions that are used to issue ETFs, for example. It's not necessarily a thing to time short-term trends because this data, it does fluctuate quite a bit and it doesn't always coincide with price tops or price bottoms, but it does help to understand the overall dynamic. The depressed prices, they come from traders, long-term holders support the price and it looks like they continue to support the price over the very, very long term. And so that's in the end, the message from this newsletter over here. If you're long-term bullish on Bitcoin, you're probably on the right side of history. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out the premium membership as well. There's daily market updates there. There's also tutorials on asset management, on portfolio construction, on general mindset around crypto and investing. So feel free to check that out, thebitcoinstrategy.com. That's where you can sign up for the premium membership. If you enjoyed this video, please give this a like. I publish videos regularly. And of course, feel free to subscribe as well. Last but not least, we've also got a public Telegram channel. We are 1,500 people over there. You can find us simply by searching for Bitcoin Strategy Channel within the Telegram app. See you next time. Bye-bye.